Good evening and welcome to Portland Tycho and Nono Boys concert video, Orient, Oregon. Musical stories of Japanese Americans in Oregon. This video is part concert, part documentary, an Oregon travelogue, a reflection on unjust incarceration and a musical appeal for immigrant rights then and now. This program was originally planned as a live concert with video projection. With COVID-19, our plans changed. And in the summer, we started recording in forests, farms, vineyards, apartments, parks, and parking lots. The founder of Nono Boy, Julian Saporiti, became not only our musical collaborator, but our video director, weaving together archival footage with new arrangements and new songs, telling the history of Japanese American Oregonians in Orient, Toledo, Portland, Ontario, and the Minidoka War Relocation Center. There are many people to thank. The foundations who pivoted with us through this pandemic, community members who shared their spaces with us, friends and family who helped record, local museums and historical societies, and our nonprofit partners, the Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon, the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization, the Japanese American Citizens League, and the Japanese American Museum of Oregon. We'd also like to thank Annie Tsuboi Migaki and the Tsuboi family, whose home movies from the 1920s to 60s illustrated to us quite poignantly a Japanese American family living through the generations in Oregon. Portland Tycho relies on audience support and we thank you for considering a donation tonight in support of our educational programs, our community-based work, and our performances here online and hopefully back in person with you in the near future. After the video, we will host a live Q&A session with members of Portland Tycho and Nono Boy. So please post your questions at any time in the YouTube chat box. Thank you again for tuning in and we will start Orient to Oregon after a brief message from our community partners. Greetings from the Japanese American Museum of Oregon. Our mission is to preserve the history and culture of the Japanese Americans in the Northwest, educate the public about their experience during World War II, and to advocate for the protection of civil rights for all Americans. We share this history at our museum and plaza as a call to action against fear and prejudice. Stories of hope, Perseverance and resiliency are shared to erode and disrupt the history and cycle of systemic racism and oppression. We uplift this history along with No No Boy and Portland Tycho to celebrate diversity in hopes to prevent others from suffering the trauma of having their culture, identity, and language lost or devalued. In sharing our history, perhaps the greatest lesson is to be vigilant to hold our country and leaders accountable to ensure that our civil rights, civil liberties, freedom, and democracy remain intact. In the words of Minoru Yasui, what can be done to the least of us can be done to all of us. His example endures as a reminder of the power of one voice echoing for justice. One person, one action, and yes, one vote can and will make a difference. We must never take that right for granted, nor underestimate that power. Those that went before us fought and died for this right, so don't let it be in vain. We hope that sharing our history inspires you to take action to ensure our future. It is more critical now than ever before. Hi, my name is Linnea. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Asian youth organizer at Apano. 
Apano is the Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon. Our mission is to unite Asian and Pacific Islanders to achieve social justice, and we do this through our main programming, which consists of cultural work, youth organizing, leadership development, community development, and political advocacy. Um, and so we encourage you to make sure that you cast your ballot this upcoming November and just to make sure that your voter registration is up to date. Um, and join us in electing candidates that really care about immigrant rights and equity. Um, and let's build community power together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amanda Shanahan. And I'm Christopher Lee. We're the co-presidents for Portland's Japanese American Citizens League. We're a volunteer run nonprofit and our mission is to celebrate Japanese American culture and use lessons from our unique American experience to promote and protect human and civil rights for all. Now more than ever, we believe it's important for our members and our community to get involved and to show up in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and to speak out and engage our friends, family, and neighbors in dialogue about racial inequities and anti-Black racism. We've been moved and inspired by the incredible numbers of people who've been showing up night after night in the streets of downtown Portland, in the neighborhoods across the city and the nation to demand justice for black lives. We encourage everyone to consider what the movement means to you and how you might get involved. And lastly, please be sure to complete your census by September 30th at 2020census.gov to make sure our community gets the resources and representation we need and deserve. Thanks to Portland Tyco and Nono Boy for capturing an important piece of history that is still too relevant today.
Oregoni came first of the forest, steam-powered sawmill town. Patience and patience now. Samurai plowshare, old Nagasaki. The Scotsman makes funny sounds, turning the language round. Learning enough for asking her out. Rafts made of hardwood, wide as the river. Orient girls come found like monarchs on frozen ground. Neo buried Andrew's body, Gresham. Pioneer, Thomas and the Kyoto salesman married earlier last year. Pose for a photo. Oh, how the years go, flanked by two grandsons proud, jewels and a modest gown. Long for the islands, welcome the workers, burnish a simple crown. Patience and patience now. Patience and patience now. Young blood built the Nihon Machi, trailblaze and timbers down. Godspeed. To you, Western Empress, so someday you'll run this town. Me, you said I crossed the goddamn ocean for you, fool. I ain't leaving now. Bury me, Japanese. See the tree.
If you run past your history Just stick it on the shelf It's hard to ponder a future beyond yourself Job done. Toledo, nineteen twenty five, wicked footnotes piled on and on and on. July, the whites broke down the doors, driven like cows, broken nose, pushed onto trains, Corvallis bound, go say king.
Some kid drowned in the river Now they're digging up a swimming hole Yesterday I played center field I needed some half innings alone Doubled off the Buddhist minister Knock the tie and run home Mini Doka Bottom nine You'll never know To O'Cal A good lead off third Toss me something fast and low I dreamt I saw a model plane this morning Flying past the boundary road Caught the eye of Abel Grable Sliding in the second to beat the throw Flurry started and I thought of the man Who got lost from block three in the snow Blanketed in white Freezing in the night Cursing, scared, feeling foolish Dying alone The first baseman got married They rode an army truck out to Twin Falls Spoke their vows in a hotel suite As a broken pump organ wheezed through the walls Little sister butchering the wedding march Some sweet comedy to it all Mini Doka dressed in white Mini Doka Snowdrifts bouncing the moonlight As the evening took the afternoon Deep in the count Staying alive A thousand spectators Nothing better to do Under diamond cut stars Horizon to horizon And a translucent milk glass moon Many doka in the night Under diamond cut stars Horizon to horizon In a translucent milk glass moon Mini Doka Dressed in white Mini Doka the river. Houston. Jerome. Rower. Amachi. Manzanar. Topaz. Tule Lake. Heart Mountain. Menadoka.
So lovely about some secret here Who doesn't want that ghost But old bloodline Some eyes like mine Denim coat and yellow tights Under J-Town lights You told me where I come from Told me I was alright I didn't know What Hopper meant, he said, oh, you're so wise. How does your mother feel about black men? They were all so wise. We caught some heat up on Laguna Street. Forget violin and some model minority under J-Town lights. You kiss my broken eyes. Told me I was all right Side, side, side Sayonara A side, a side, a side A side was all you said A side, a side, a side Sayonara Hey Century 16 A red like a box A white paper swan Black ink and Japanese Sa, 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 sayonara Sa, 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 sayonara Freshman gal was made to go. Hey, Miss 
Mr. Winemaker, we ought to find her address and send her some Oregon wine. Feed in the barrel of grapes on the vine, mast and crazy, dollar short and a day behind. Doing okay if in just short of fine, passing a bottle of Oregon wine. Thank you again for tuning in to our concert video event. My name is Wynn Kiyama, Executive Director of Portland Tyco and your Q&A moderator tonight. So if you have any questions for Portland Tyco or Nono Boy, please continue posting them in the chat. So it's a pleasure to introduce all of the folks here. First, I'm pleased to welcome Portland Tyco members, Karen Tingey and Meredith Wood. Together with Paul Comrie, they make up Portland Tycho's artistic leadership team. And I'd also like to introduce Amelia Halverson and Julian Saperiti of Nono no Boy. Julian and Amelia, uh, thank you again for the wonderful songs and performances tonight. Now, um, Nono no Boy is a musical group that makes beautiful music, uh, but there is so much more to your process than just playing the guitar and singing. Uh, so I wonder, could you tell us a little bit about Nono no Boy, your process, and how you find inspiration? Um, sure. So this started as a school project. I'm still a student going on like 25th grade or something like that right now, finishing up finally. But I just wanted to find a way to tie my research into Asian American history and immigration and race into ways that I could connect with people more broadly. So I turned it into songs, which is my background. Since I was a young person, I was a songwriter. And I've had so many wonderful collaborators, Amelia being one of the first and one of the mainstays. And uh, so for this project, we did a bunch of research, which Wynn helped with, about Oregon Japanese American history. That was kind of the larger project for writing these songs. And then uh, recorded them. And what was really wonderful about this is um, even though we were distant, we got a lot of recordings from Portland Tycho and played over them, or we sampled the drums themselves and I composed new rhythms and things like that out of Portland Tycho instruments. And everything you hear that isn't a guitar basically is either the flute really messed with and sampled and made into a keyboard instrument or the violin um, or some traditional Japanese instruments or sounds from the actual Japanese Oregon Museum. So like artifacts from the mini Doka camp, I sampled and made into percussion instruments that layer along with a taiko. So it's that research, it's that sound design thing, it's the songwriting, and then of course the archival visuals is a big part of what we do. And Amelia really helped out because I was super under the gun and she curated all of those images and basically took them out of like how many hours of footage, like 10 hours of footage, and then gave them to me to edit. And so it was super helpful. Amelia, do, do you want to talk a little bit about that process and about the home movies that you were watching? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was so great uh, being able to use the Suboy family video collection. It was just incredible to see this footage taken just by regular people um, on their own home camera through the 30s and the 60s um, and just getting this glimpse of Asian American life that I feel like as someone who has always enjoyed retro things or vintage things, you don't really see Asian faces in those stories and images. Um, and so for this process, it was, um, we would watch these videos together and then take notes on like, oh, this was such an amazing shot. We definitely have to put this in there. And then I would sort of chop them up into little usable bits that sort of fit thematically with the songs. And then Jillian did all the magic of setting them to the music. So it was really fun. Yeah, and we had talked about this, but really it does come across like an Americana for Asian Americans. Yeah, and just thanks again to the Sue Boy family uh, and Annie, who we talked with. Uh, I think she's the, the granddaughter of the person who started taking those films way back in the day. And it's so rare to find Asian American footage like that, but it's so intrinsic to Oregon, um, you know, the, from, you know, logging and forests and rivers there were all these different kinds of people there from the get-go, basically, of statehood. And that was cool to show. Well, thank you. 
And Karen and Meredith, uh, what is the creative process like for Portland Tycho and how does the group push itself musically? Yeah, I think Portland Tycho is super lucky that we have this incredibly deep reservoir of existing repertoire, most of which was composed by Portland Tycho members over the years. So when we're looking for new pieces, uh, sometimes we're just looking to bring back pieces that we haven't played in a while, but that fit with the artistic vision for that for the concert that year. Um, we also are often looking to add new compositions. So last year for the 25th anniversary gala, we had three brand new compositions composed by individual performing members. Um, another source of compositions over the years has been our community-based compositions, uh, which in some ways are kind of similar to what Julian uh, does, like A Place Called Home, where we composed the piece based on stories we had heard from local Japanese American folks about their experiences and their family's experiences. Um, and we also do like other types of creative work, like within our pieces, um, or like rearranging the different pieces that we have, like Dan Chin, um, he rearranged Fearless Hearts um, for this concert. So that was great. And that was a great challenge for the group. Um, we also have a lot of solo sections um, in our different pieces. So performers are able to create their own solos and we're actually working on bringing back one of my favorite pieces, Oyaso Dondon, which is basically like a structured set of solos and it's really based on uh, the performers um, creating their solos. Um, and we also like get to bring back during this time, like a lot of pieces, everybody has always wanted to learn, but we've never had time to actually learn them. So it's been really fun. Thank you. Now, uh, Karen and Meredith, this collaboration with Nono Boy was originally planned pre-COVID as a live concert with video projection. So how did COVID-19 affect Portland Tycho uh, and how did it affect this project? Yeah, so COVID definitely impacted how we went about preparing for this concert. Um, it turned into a virtual concert. Um, but we were really fortunate to be working with No No Boy and their specialty is like documentary and video. So it was a great partnership and um, it was great to reimagine what the concert was going to be with them. Um, and also we wanted to keep everybody safe when we were like filming the new parts of, of our concert. So we learned most of our new pieces through Zoom and um, then we like got together a couple of times outside social distance and we played on like tires um, to learn the rest of it. And we still have weekly Zoom practices. Yeah, I think that we were really lucky that this was the planned collaboration this particular year, because after we realized that we had to transition to a virtual concert, Julian came up with the genius idea of kind of taking the Oregon theme further than we would have been able to do with a live concert. And this idea of filming outdoors in, in specific locations using this Oregon specific archival footage to go with the Oregon specific new songs. Um, and so I think the results were less figuring out how to do what we normally do in a virtual setting and more really kind of changing what we're aiming to do uh, to make it well suited to, to the limitations. So, so it almost felt like because we had these constraints and limitations we were able to do something we wouldn't have been able to do in a, in a live stage production. Thank you. And Julian and Amelia, you know, when we started talking about this collaboration, you were still on the East Coast. And I know that you moved to Portland in February. And since that time, we've had COVID-19 and white nationalists and smoke at historic levels. So welcome to Portland. Uh, yeah, not the not the maybe the best year to move, but um, all things considered, this was a great project to have to keep busy for the last six months for sure. Well, and so how how has COVID nineteen affected the two of you and affected your work? Um, yeah, it definitely affected the plans. Like we were planning to be on tour in swing states basically this fall, uh, and the new album was going to come out on the Smithsonian, which is now pushed back to next year. I guess. Um, and uh, so that like whole musician career has totally like most of my colleagues, I'm sure has gone out the window. And then it also sidetracked my dissertation ruined a, a chapter because of research um, inability to do that. 
But like I said, this was a great project to sort of regroup and, and do both, to find new things to research and write about the Japanese American history in Oregon, what it's like to work with a, a community to have to kind of not only uh, look at the history that's happened, but also talk to people um, who are here now and what that legacy means and how to responsibly put that, put that across in a collaboration. And then, um, yeah, we're not in the ideal place to record an album, as it turns out. Um, yeah, we live in a studio apartment on the second floor, so we share a few walls with our friendly neighbors who we have yet to meet. Um, and in the spirit of trying to be good neighbors, we've sort of had to work our recording schedule around uh, appropriate noisy hours. And there was even a time recording um, the belting parts on Sayonara, where we put a blanket over Jillian's head to sort of muffle the sound of it and avoid any noise complaints. <laughs> Um, and I think the other sort of change too it was um, our focus being more on how can we make this like um, an educational video and serve students or other people just to sort of pique their curiosity about this history and then also the format. Yeah, that was a really important part towards the end, especially knowing that the Sue Boy footage existed and that we could use that. And especially, I'm going to cut this down to a shorter like classroom size thing. Um, and I really want people to see the A Place Called Home mini doka middle section because I've always cut video with this as part of this project, but I've never had anything as dynamic musically as A Place Called Home, the middle song about the immigration and then uh, settle, um, having to go to the camps and stuff like that. And I found that really moving and powerful. And I've looked at this footage and these images for the last four years as a researcher and seeing it with that percussive dynamic element was really cool. And so especially during this socially distanced uh, remote learning time, that's something that I'm hoping to work with Oregon teachers and my friends who are teachers across the country to have like, you know, the more multimedia they can have right now, I think uh, the better uh, to teach history or whatever. Yeah. Well, thank you. So uh, nowadays, we're all getting used to doing everything online, online classes, performances, and collaborations as well. Um, now, how were you able to collaborate when not actually meeting or playing together? Uh, and what was the collaboration process like? So Karen, do you want to start us off? Um, yeah, I can definitely, definitely start off. Um... Yeah, you know, or Meredith, do you want to talk about collaborating with Julian first, and oh, then I can hey. talk a little bit about <laughs> how we we work together? Um, so Zoom became our best friend. So we had um, several Zoom meetings with Julian and Karen, Paul, and I, and Lynn, um, and then we did a lot of communication also uh, through email, emailing back and forth. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think just talking about Zoom specifically uh you know it's just like with work there are some things you have to do differently because it's tiring to be in a zoom um, and for the taiko pieces you can't really play together and we learned that you know it was better to do small small breakout groups um, and kind of do more work outside of our time together to make better use of the time that we were together <laughs> um yeah and i think i think it it really also was a great chance for for different folks in portland taiko to kind of step up and Take turn leading drills. Dan rearranging fearless hearts. Um, yeah, so that when the when the group started rehearsing in person, then then we'd post videos of that. So so it, it kind of became that in between rehearsals we were doing a lot of work, uh, and then we finally were able to come together and 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 do the recording. So just I guess a lot of it became asynchronous, both in the collaboration with Julian and Amelia, and also with with how Portland Tycho worked together. And Julian, did you want to talk about your process as well, getting music to Portland Tyco, Portland Tyco delivering stuff to you? Um, yeah, I mean, with anything in involving this many people, um, you know, you're going to have, uh, I guess, like, there's a lot of just Dropbox folders, like too many, and then uh, a lot of emails and stuff like that. And you just kind of have to wade through all that. And it was it was really interesting. It's not something I would want to do again at all. I mean, the whole point of taking this gig was to be on a stage and we could play electric guitar really loud with a big, loud drumming group, uh, which obviously didn't happen. We made a little YouTube video. Um, 
<laughs> but I'm very proud of this. And I think it's, it's not despite the collabor collaboration um, sort of pitfalls, but because of the way we had to collaborate, like Karen alluded to earlier, this turned out completely different. Um, and I just kind of just worked with whatever came in. Um, and then that mutated into stuff that I thought was, I, originally I thought it was going to be like in the first song you see Amelia and I at the graveyard at Mio's grave. Um, and we just sing the song live. And I thought we were going to do more of that. But then I realized I don't have a cameraman. Um, so I don't want to film myself cause I feel really dumb. Uh, and then we found all this archival footage and then that kind of like was able to integrate with the live pop of Tycho performances. But yeah, it was just a really crazy collaboration and I'm very tired from it, but I love these people and the thing that we did. So I'll get and to sleep. And hopefully happy. Portland Tycho likes the changes to their sounds that have happened too. <laughs> yeah. We thank you for all of the editing and magic that you did, Julian. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. It's like I said, I'm very happy with the final product and um, I think COVID sucks. Yeah. Yes, I think we can all agree. And I think we can all agree we want to play big drums and electric guitar through amps with you someday. Yeah. Someday. 2030. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay, well, let's keep positive, everyone. <laughs> um, there are some questions that are coming in through the chat. Uh, so, Julian and Amelia. Um, so uh, Diego writes, uh, wonderful music and stories. I'm wondering if Nona Boy can talk more about their archival process and how they decided on musical genre to convey these stories. Uh, thanks for that, Diego. He's asked this question at three or four concerts. Uh, and he's one of the great researchers who's a part of uh, researchers who's a big part of Nono Boy. Um, but as far as the archive goes, I really look for anything um, that I can try to illuminate in the Asian American archive or when the songs stretch to other um, topics that we sing about like current day immigration issues, just photos that I want people to sit with. Cause you have to remember most of the time, this is usually a small concert between 30 and hundred people. And we're all kind of gathered together, mostly acoustic. And it's more like really showing home movies on a projector screen behind us. So you want people to sit with history. Um, because to me, after all my learning, I just come to the conclusion that history is a big mess. And the best we can do is just kind of sit with it and try to accept and um, work through that and do something with it. And so it's important to use these archives in a way that uh, humanizes a subject, but also brings in fantasy and magic to it, as many home movies do, um, or many just documents do, visual documents. And then as far as the songwriting, I will quote something that the questioner once said to me, and he says, using folk music, which is what we primarily play, uh, gives um, these stories a nostalgia for a time we never learned about. So that's kind of why I use the acoustic guitar so much, um, or in this case, electric guitar, but nostalgic sounding music. That's great. He also has a follow-up question, but I don't know if you want to hear it. I'll take it. Well, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Come on, Diego, what'd you ask? <laughs> Is he on your dissertation committee? Because man, it, it sounds like it. So here we go. No, he's, 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 he's younger than I am. <laughs> uh, next generation. Okay. Also, I'd like to hear more thoughts about how these stories challenge slash contextualize hegemonic narratives of Asian America. Well, I think that was sort of the original theme is that um, this is a very Americana suite of songs and the visuals that we have, even a mostly Asian American drumming group in the forest or outdoors with lots of green around them. We're embedding ourselves as we've always been embedded as Asian Americans since the Chinese came over, or as Diego will tell you in his research, since the Filipinos were here like in the uh, 1600s and on the West Coast. Um, we've been in the forest, we've been on the railroads, we've been in the vineyards, we've been in the orchards. Uh, this is very much a part of the Oregon landscape. And to me, that is, I guess, what did he say? Like an intervention into the hegemonic, whatever. Um, to me, that's what I'm intervening in by showing these archival footages, uh, because I've always been a big outdoorsman. I grew up in a house in the woods. I moved to Wyoming and climbed mountains, but I never saw 
pictures of myself doing this in the historical record. And so finding these movies and these photographs of Asians on mountains, um, which is a very Asian thing to do if you go to Asia, <laughs> there's many mountains, um, the biggest ones in the world, in fact. Um, you know, putting those images, especially in a state like Oregon, which in its constitution tried to be a white only state is a very, uh, I guess, important part of the songs and the visuals embedding these faces and other people of color alongside the founders of the state saying these people have been here since the beginning. And that's like Amelia said, the educational aspect is important. If a high school kid in rural Oregon can see that video, maybe that um, twists the twists a thought around and that's that's important. Great, thank you, Julian. And thank you, Diego. Let's do a little bit lighter question. Uh, this comes from Kenji uh, Spielman. How much fun was making the video for Sayonara because it seemed like so much fun. Can you talk about the process of, of Sayonara, the video? I guess particularly maybe that final section? I think when you were filming, so you should share the process. I was just obviously absorbed in pink smoke. <laughs> well, uh, from my perspective, uh, sometime in the process, kind of later in the process, Julian sent me an email saying, hey, I want to do smoke bombs uh, in Sayonara. Um, can we set that up? <laughs> uh, and uh, the Oregon Buddhist Temple allowed us to do that. Um, yeah, and Julian bought the smoke bombs, and I brought a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you brought your guitar and your cool blazer, and Megumi and Dan played taiko. That's that's my perspective on it all. Yeah, they just went crazy. Um, and I mean, we weren't playing to even the track or anything like that because we knew it was going to be in slow motion. So it's literally like, guys, jump around as fast and as high as you can, and it'll look crazy. And They really brought their A game. Yeah, Those are some as, high as did Amelia rocking out on the electric. Yeah, guitar. my neck was sore for like five days after. So <laughs> That's pretty much what Dan said on the chat. He said it was, it was a blast, but he wished that they had warmed up first because <laughs> he was feeling it for days later. It was a physical then, assault for sure. We chose Dan and Megumi because we knew that, that they could pull that off. Yeah. Uh, Shoji asked a, a, a question, how did this collaboration start? Um, and we're running out of time, uh, but I did go and check my email, um, Shoji, to see when I first emailed Julian and it went back to 2018. Uh, when they performed in Portland, one of the Portland Taiko co-founders, Valerie Otani, uh, both of us went to go see you at the Gaman Fest, uh, and we both just were swept away by your performance. And then things started to roll a little bit after that. Um, we were talking about this collaboration by November 2018, um, and that, uh, everything just came together. Uh, yeah, I was, I was telling you, you know, the we had written a grant for the Orient Oregon idea uh, before working with you, but we had tabled it, and I guess it was just waiting for you to come because then everything just just worked out really nicely. Yeah, on my end, I remember we talked about this years ago, and uh, a, port, a small group of Portland Taiko had come open the show at the Buddhist Temple. Yeah. We did on a fall tour in 2018, I think, and then. Yeah, the, the idea for, you told me the story about Mio and Orient Oregon and the sawmill, and then that kind of set me off in April and May and just researching and um, doing a crash course in Asian American history in Oregon and then finding a bunch of other neat topics to write about. Yeah. yeah. So um, it looks like we're running a little bit short on time. Uh, so maybe just a few, couple of final questions then. Uh, Julian and Amelia, aside from voting in October for the November elections, what is next for Nono no Boy? Um, got some workshops for some different classes and just universities, like online stuff, putting together little, I guess, virtual concerts like this, and, and then doing talks with the students. And I'm 
trying to finish up a dissertation after rearranging it due to COVID. Uh, and then taking a big break and hopefully retiring from singing really sad songs about <laughs> atrocities for a while. But uh, that's what I'm up to. Yeah. Well, and hopefully the album will come out next year, too, is the, the okay, big one. So I won't retire before the album comes out, but then after that and the dissertation. At least one more year. Yeah, at least one more year. <laughs> yeah that's really exciting. The uh, Smithsonian Folkways Records, um, we'll, we'll be watching for it. Us, too. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Karen and Meredith, aside from voting in October for the November elections, what is next for Portland Tyco? Well, we're still holding our Tyco 101 workshops and our Tyco classes online virtually. So you can uh, check our schedule for those at portlandtyco.org. Our first one, Tyco 101 workshop is happening this Wednesday at 7. So you can check that out online on our website. Yep, and we'll also keep working on our skills and repertoire as a group over Zoom. Um, and we're kicking off a, a wonderful project uh, around a new composition honoring Valerie Otani, one of our co-founders. Uh, Zach Semke will be uh, providing the base of the composition, a melody and some and some some rhythms, and then as a group, we'll work on learning it and bringing it to life. So that's that's something I'm really looking forward to. Okay, as we're wrapping up, there's one person uh, that is not visible. Actually, there are four people that are not visible to our viewers, uh, but I wanted to thank Krista, Toa, and Paul, Portland Tyco members who are our chat moderators tonight. Thank you for all your work. And running the whole live stream uh, is Audrey Tu, uh, tu from Los Angeles. Uh, we borrowed her from Tycho Project. So thank you, Audrey, for keeping everything running so smoothly. I'd also like to thank, again, uh, Karen and Meredith, Amelia and Julian. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Thank you for your donations tonight. Thank you for filling out the 2020 census, and most especially, Thank you for voting in this year's elections. Together, we can make a difference. <laughs>